Hi guys, and welcome to a beginner's guide to modding Skyrim part 10. Now, in the last episode, I promised that I would be showing you the different types of mods you can install and the things you must consider when doing so. However, I'm going to break that promise because I realized to do that, I needed to discuss the potential problems that occur when installing various different mods and that that was a fairly hefty subject in of itself. And so I decided that it would be a good idea to explain the types of problems that you might find in advance. Basically so that when I start talking about the mods themselves, I don't have to spend a huge amount of time describing the problems that you might occur. You're already aware of them and in that video we can kind of just focus on the mods and how you can mitigate the problems, how you can avoid the problems rather than what those problems are. Now obviously this video by its very nature may sound a little doom and gloom filled, you know, we're, we're talking about problems, but think of this as more like a preparation guide, something similar to the instructions to crossing a road. Crossing a road is inherently a dangerous activity, but if you follow some basic steps, you will probably manage it your entire life without getting squished. In this video, I will be describing the various ways you can get squished while modding your game, and in the next video, the ways in which you can avoid it. Now, I will say that I probably not covered every type of problem there is. I'm not sure that's actually possible, but I, I think I've managed to classify the four major ways in which you can have a problem, and I have split them up into four categories. Again, if there are things that I've missed, I do apologize, but I am just trying to get the basics, the, the most common problems that may hit you. So. What are those four categories? The first one is crash to desktop when you start your game. That is where you literally start the game, it gets almost to the menu and then immediately crashes. Now believe it or not, this is the least worrying of all the problems you will get. Uh, sometimes people panic and think this is the worst, I mean I can't even start the game. Uh, this actually indicates something is wrong with your mod installation and you should be able to find it relatively easily and fix it without much trouble. In fact, I have an entire video devoted to this subject. It's not long, it's about eight and a half minutes, and it revolves around using a tool called Test 5 Edit. Now, at first glance, this tool looks fairly advanced, and it actually is, but it also has some very simple features. It's pretty easy to use uh, for basic stuff like this, and I really do think you should download and install that and just have it there just in case you do need to troubleshoot your load order. Go off and watch that video, it will show you how to do it. Believe it or not, it is dead easy. I use it to troubleshoot my load order because it's a lot easier than trying to do it by hand, by trying to figure out which of the masters you're missing. The second category of problem is performance and instability. Now, these are the sort of annoying problems where the game either starts slowing down, you get very low frame rate, or you get crashes, maybe after 10 minutes, maybe after half an hour, but you do get crashes. This problem is a little harder to troubleshoot and can have a variety of different causes. One of the major causes is lack of memory. The modded version of Skyrim can actually use a huge amount of memory and it can reach a certain limit, 3.1 gigabytes. There is a kind of hard limit to how much memory Skyrim will use before it simply crashes. And again, I did make a video describing this problem in detail and I will leave a link here. And there are a number of solutions or things that can help. For example, if you've heard of a graphical mod called ENB, it also comes with something that helps with this memory problem. And you can actually use that, uh, the, what's called EN Boost, without the ENB, without the graphical overhaul if you wish. However, that's a little outside this, uh, this series of tutorials. It's, it's a little bit more advanced. 
You can also optimize textures so that the textures take up less room because, of course, textures are a fairly large resource hog. You can reduce some other mods that perhaps are taking up more memory and so on. So there are a variety of ways to combat this. There are also some mods out there that just make the game a little less stable, even though they don't push the memory. I have noticed uh, some people have trouble with mods that change the distant terrain objects, that add objects to the distant terrain. Not everyone has these problems, but some people do. And there are many tweaks that you can make to Skyrim. You can find a load of guides on how to tweak Skyrim so it runs faster and so on. But sometimes those tweaks will actually make the game less stable. For example, there is one tweak to something we call U-Grids to Load that will make you see better detail a lot further. And it makes the game look a lot nicer. But it can make the game a little less stable and cause some other problems. In fact, that is a tweak I would definitely not recommend for beginners and only recommend for advanced users with the proviso that they understand they are doing something very risky. But in general, there's no super fix for these type of problems. It is just a matter of being reasonably sensible. In the next video, I will talk about this uh, with different type of mods, the sort of things you should think of, whether you should install every mod that you find, and which versions of the mods that you should use, depending on the system. Basically, if a mod doesn't add anything to your gaming experience, don't use it. If you're using a texture mod and you can't see a difference between the high quality and the ultra high quality, use the high quality. Just sensible stuff like that. The third type of problem that you are likely to come across are the problems with conflicts. That is where one mod conflicts with another mod and the symptoms of such conflict can vary. Uh, they could be as little as a small glitch or a missing item, all the way up to complete crashes. You can get certain mods that, when mixed, will cause you to crash if you enter a certain area of the map. And obviously, this is fairly catastrophic. In general, the way to avoid conflicts is research. You need to check out every mod that you install and compare it with the mods you already have and see, are they compatible? Most mod authors list the mods that you cannot use with their mod. Pay attention to that, it is pretty important. This category of problem is actually reasonably easy to fix. The problem is, you don't always detect it very early on. You might have two mods installed for a month before the conflict hits you. And sometimes that can be too late. Sometimes if you've had those mods in your load order for that amount of time, it becomes problematic to remove them. And you now have two mods that conflict with each other and you don't know what to do. So in general, the way to avoid conflict problems is to read the page information, the README, uh, the, the Nexus front page, and so on. Just read all the information, know what you're installing, and how it relates to things you already have installed. The fourth type of problem that you can get modding your game or tweaking your game is the dreaded save game problem. And I say dreaded for a good reason. This type of problem can be terminal for your save game. Not for the game itself, you'll be able to start a new game or load another save, or load an older save usually, but the save game that you are currently playing could get ruined. Uh, it is possible. There are a number of ways that can happen, actually. You could get the dreaded save game bloat. This is where your save game suddenly starts growing. It just grows from, say, 11 megabytes to, uh, God knows, 100 megabytes and the game starts slowing down, things take ages to process, the glitches appear, and so on, and it can be a major headache. Now, there are some ways to fix that, actually, and a way to prevent it from happening, even when using mods that are a little bit more likely to cause that. I haven't made a video about that, and I probably should, um, so if I get that video done, I will Put a link to it at the bottom of this video so check below to see if i've made that video but there is a far more dangerous problem that can hit your save game you can actually get 
places in Skyrim that will become inaccessible. If you go to those areas, some horrible glitch will happen or a complete crash will happen. I have got a save game where I have a little Bermuda Triangle, a little area of the map that I cannot enter because my game will literally crash every time without fail. And there is literally, at the moment, no way to fix it. So that is obviously a far more devastating problem to be hit with. There probably are some other problems I'm not thinking of right now. However, I do believe this list covers the majority of the problems that I see day to day and probably covers most of the ones you're going to have to look out for when modding your game. Now, you may be at this point thinking, oh dear, what have I done? I've modded my game. Have I broken it? Uh, there are so many problems. Uh, don't worry. It really is incredibly unlikely that any of these problems will occur if you take some basic precautions, if you use a little common sense. Many of the problems that occurred, occurred in the very early days of modding Skyrim when both the modders and the mod makers didn't understand the new engine quite as well as the previous engine. And in general, nowadays, most of the mods have removed things that could be dangerous, and there are a lot of guides on how to avoid all of these problems. There really isn't any problem that you cannot avoid now, and in fact, probably fix. The only problem I have ever had that I couldn't fix in the end was on this one save game. And you should not use me as a barometer for how dangerous it is to mod, because I change my mods at a ridiculous rate far more than you probably ever will, now, especially at the time of this save game. I was installing maybe 50 to 100 mods a week and uninstalling just as many. It's actually a miracle that save game lasted as long as it did. So even though I want you to be aware of the dangers and I want you to understand the risks, I don't want you to panic. I don't want you to get the wrong impression. If you use some common sense and some patience, do, do the reading, you will avoid these problems. Of course, modding your game really does make the game, in my opinion, so much better. It makes it a whole new experience and it is well worth doing for the relatively minor risk if you take the right precautions. And that is what the next video is going to be about. I'm going to discuss the different types of mods, whether it's armor mods, quest mods, mods that add player homes and so on, and tell you the type of risks you run when using those mods, how to minimize those risks, and generally use whichever mods you want completely safely. You guys are more than welcome to join me for that video, and I look forward to seeing you there. And until then, as always, have fun. Oh, my God.